I'm, I'm forever grateful for that. So, but um, in saying that, yeah, I'm pretty close with the boys as well. I'd like to give a big shout out to the Hoodoo Gurus who have given us permission to use part of their song, That's My Team, as our new podcast episode intro for all of their music. And whenever they are going live or performing live, head to their Facebook and their Instagram. The links will be in the description below. Be sure to give them a like and a follow as well on Facebook and Instagram. Everyone, welcome back to the Final Tackle Podcast, and we've got a special episode, the first ever video episode via Zoom. It is with John Scandalis, 2005 West Tigers Grand Final winner, and actually, to any of you who don't know, the first ever try scorer for the West Tigers. Thanks for joining us here today, mate. No worries. Thanks for uh, having me. It's uh, good to be here. Yeah, no, no worries. Um, so I guess let's get started. Obviously, your debut was for the West's West's Magpies, but also Western Suburbs Magpies. What was that like getting your, you know, your first grade debut for that team? Oh, mate, amazing. I think anyone, any person or any player that you, you speak to about that moment, it's, you know, it's, it's a great re- reward for all the hard work you put in through as a young kid um, and all the off seasons that you have to achieve. Um, well, actually, sorry, not achieve, but actually survive more than anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and it's just yeah, it's it's everything that you train for as a, as a young kid and, and and dream of. You know, that's why we play play rugby league to as um, as a junior to to make first grade one day, and then suddenly you get that, that tap on the shoulder that you're playing, and you know, it's it's an amazing feeling. It's it's just a lot of satisfaction more than anything. But um, you know, that's they always say that's the easy part to make first grade. It's it's actually staying there yeah, is, sticking, is, the hard, yeah. is the hard thing, yeah. So, no, it was an amazing feeling. I And even better that I got to do it at, at my home ground and in front of, you know, my home uh, my home, um, home crowd, home fans and a lot of friends and family. So it was a special moment for me. No, that's fair. And speaking, obviously, struggling to stick with it, you know, stick and stay in the team. Did you find it um, difficult once, obviously, you got the tap on the shoulder to stay in the first grade team? Uh, the first year, probably not as much because you're, you're playing on a high um, mm. and, you know, you're excited. Um, whereas when you get a little bit older, as it gets older, as you get older and a bit more experienced, you've, also, you've always, always got that young kid underneath you who's trying to take your spot. So yeah, yep. um, you can see it both two, in two ways. You know, you can see it as a hard, you can see it hard or you can see it as a challenge. Yep. I always saw it as a challenge and that probably kept me on my toes more than anything because I knew one, you know, once upon a time, I was that kid trying to get that old get guys, or that, trying to get that spot. And yeah, lucky and lucky for me, or well, not lucky for me, but yeah, you know, my my opportunity came through um, one of the front rows got an injury, and they gave me my shot. So, and I never looked back from there. So I always, I was always making sure one that I was playing well and consistently, mm-hmm. and two that I looked after myself so I wouldn't get injured because. You know, an injury can can just give, give that yeah. opportunity to somebody um, was, who's underneath waiting, waiting for that ch- chance. So um, I just found it depends how you see it. I found it as a challenge, and I found it as a, um, uh, I guess, uh, you know, just something that, that egged me on to keep performing yeah. every week. Yeah, yeah. Now, honestly, that's awesome. I was going to say you relatively had more or less an injury-free career, more or less. So that just goes to show. Um, and speaking of West's Tigers, let's go into that for a little bit. First of all, you were in the first ever West Tigers team and you actually scored the first ever try for that team. What was that like? <laughs> well, first of all, playing in the first game, so an original technically, and then also scoring the first try. Uh, playing with, First of all, playing in the team, um, unbelievable moment. Um, you know, you're part of history forever. You know, oh. you're in that first team forever to merge, but, um, to play in a merge team, you know, between two fantastic, great clubs that have, you know, an enormous... A rich history. Um, rich history you know 200 years between us of history more now um so to to be one of the players one of the 17 players to actually play in that team um i probably uh um respect it more now than i did back then i guess a little mm-hmm. bit because back then it was just excitement you know that i was yeah. playing now i i really respect and, and and feel privileged that i got to do that um to score the first try mate uh, yeah you know people <laughs> still talk about people People still remind me, and um, at the time, I didn't think of anything, anything of it, to be honest. You're just doing just your job? Win, yeah, just doing job and want to win the game. So, at that time, it just wasn't as, as exciting. But now that I look at it, again, look back at it, and you know, it's part of the history books. Even though if you speak to Joel Kane, he still <laughs> doubts that I scored the try because <laughs> um, I think I actually think he's more filthy that he, um, 
that no one remembers the three tries that he scored and the mm. one try that I scored. Yep. So, yep. you know, I think in that day, he scored the 20 points out of the 24 points that we scored on the day. And yeah, but you no were the, really still did. the first try scorer, though. Yeah, That's right. So, <laughs> everyone remembers my try, not his, but his try. So, exactly. That's um, right. Yeah, no. I feel privileged. Yeah, now that's yeah, very similar uh, to Robbie O. Davis in the 97 grand final. He scored two tries and got the Clive Churchill, but everyone <laughs> remembers Darren Albert for that yeah. win, for that match winner. Yeah, no, that's yeah, fair. Same scenario, mate. So Joel Kane's got a little bit of uh, hate against me against my try, <laughs> so that's okay. Uh, I can live with that. No, that's fair enough. And speaking of grand finals, again, you were part of more or less an exclusive club in the sense of you were part of history by making and winning the grand final for the first time for that club in particular. What was it like, A, getting to the grand final, grand final day, and obviously winning, everyone knows, because of what happened in the interviews afterwards? Well, first of all, getting into the grand final, unbelievable. Like, you know, it's, again, it's just like your first grade debut. You know, it's something that you do week in, week out. You train, you play every year. You do it to, to get there. Doing okay. to get there. That's that's the that's I guess the hard part, you know, because you've got so many rounds to do. You've got so many challenges throughout the season: um, injuries, uh, form, um, you know, win losses, so on and so on. So the whole year itself is such a big challenge. But once you're there, and especially in the semi-finals, you know you're you're a shot. If you're in the semis, you know you're a shot for the grand final. Um, but to get into the grand final, mate, it's yeah, words you can't put put it all into one word. You know, it's it's, it's so many feelings come come rushing through your, your mind, your body, you know, you go back thinking of your junior football, you go through, you know, times when you were doing it, you know, tough in, in re, your, your career and then suddenly you're, you're in the biggest, you know, the stage world's biggest all, stage. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then obviously to, to, to win it, um, that was, to be honest, probably once I got through the part where I felt so satisfied that I actually got to, got not only to win, to play in a grand final, but to, to win a grand final, um, yeah, that was uh, the, once I got past that stage, the emotions. Yeah, it's just an emotional roller coaster where you, you know, you, you feel so happy for for yourself. Obviously, you feel happy for the fans and the sponsors, and um, you know everyone that's been watching your your career all the way through, and and then obviously your 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 family, your wife, your kids, they go through it with you all the time. You know, you got to think that whatever you bring home after a game comes home, you know, and unfortunately mm-hmm. with you, and sometimes. Uh, the family are the first people that see it all got to put up with it. So um, it's more of reward for not just yourself, but everyone that's around you and that has been around you for so long. Mm. Um, but and you, the emotion is unbelievable. As you could, as you touched on a little bit after the game, you know, you just can't <laughs> Well, Chris <troll>. Hyneton, <laughs> definitely. Oh, there was a few. I think there was Chris Hyneton, Ben Galea. There was a yep. couple that sort of, uh, their let emotion alone. got the better of them and um, they let it rip out a little bit. So, um, but that's what it is. You know, that's, that's- that, that was... That's that raw. Was pure that's, motion. Exactly. that's raw. Exactly. Yeah. That's raw emotion. You you can't make that up. You know. That's that that's uncontrollable emotion. If I, if the camera could have followed everybody, you know, every individual player around that day, um, you would have seen some of the other. You've seen a lot worse. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So no, look, it was a it was a fantastic feeling. And, and again, the feeling when you do it on the day and at that time is and it's sensational. But it's actually now that I I look back at it and you know I, think, I wow. see. Um, Paddy Richards and I see Liam Fulton, you know, for example, last night I caught up with him and, you know, you catch up every every year with the guys and grand final season comes around and... You're like, oh, I remember that flourish. one. Exactly. They, it's like you did it yesterday, you know, so for, and that's going to be with us forever. Yeah. Um, and we're going to be attached some way, you know. As how, a brotherhood sort of thing, thing in that way, like... It is. Perfect. Perfect how we... And that's how we said it, you know, we were going to be brothers forever and it's something we share share forever so yeah and um, some players are lucky to win more than one example paul fatawira he won it two years beforehand with the panthers and then right. and then won it with you guys so um speaking of that grand final in particular the 05 in particular the 05 one you had brady hodgson and you had paul fatawira who'd both played in grand finals previously brett unfortunately losing one and paul winning one do you think that they did they help you guys on the ga- like on the day of the game sort of thing uh, to be honest, no, they, they didn't really, um, they didn't have much input in their, on, their, on their own experience, to be honest. I think that it was more because we were going, going through a journey on our own that mm. I think they left it. They didn't need to come in with their own experience because they, yeah. we, we were just doing it as every week, week in, week out, basically. You know, we were going through the weeks, worrying about the opponent, the opponent we were facing, um, you know, the Cowboys to start with, we, we just worry about them Broncos. We just worry about them Dragons. We didn't care. We never looked ahead and we never, yeah. and even when we made it, you know, they didn't come out and saying, oh, 
you expect this, you should be doing this, so on and so on. Yeah. Um, the, only, the only other thing I remember, I guess, was Roy Simmons coming, having a bit of a talk to us. He lost his first grand final in 1990. Yep. Um, and he was, he said, it's a feeling that you never ever want to experience. And uh, he said, you know, he remembers getting the, the runners up medal, whatever it was. And the first thing he did was throw it in the bin because he just felt so, so filthy that he lost. Mm. And I just, I don't know what, why that, came into me in my head, but I just feel I'd never want to, I don't want to feel that because I don't think I could ever watch a grand final again, to be honest, if I'd lost it. So yeah. Um, yeah. In a way that, you know, I guess inspired me to, to make sure that I did everything in my power to win the grand final. And I think that touched a little bit other guys as well. So um, yeah, that was probably anything I can recall, but Brad and, and, um, and Fats, yeah, no, they, they didn't have, they didn't really discuss their own experiences too much. We just let it sort of ride. And yeah. we just enjoyed the how, how enjoyed the week sort of thing. Yeah, basically that's what it was. We we'd never experienced it before. The only thing uh, I guess Shanzi. Another thing I remember Shanzi coming back. And obviously Shanzi was part of what three grand finals prior to that. Yeah, and he just said enjoy the week. Just enjoy. Keep trying to enjoy the week. Suck it in as much as you can. But when it's business time and it's training time, you know you you got to knuckle down. Don't don't allow the the distractions of the media and the mm. fans and all that get to you because and don't obviously play the game. Before the, you actually put it in the head before the game yeah, starts. Yeah, because so many people do that. I've, and that's yeah. all of them. The yeah. ones that I've interviewed that have lost a grand final have said that, that it's the game has been played over in their head a thousand times. Yeah. 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 yeah we, didn't change, and we didn't change much either. You know, think a lot of the people, or a lot of players, a lot of teams um, normally get jump in a bus and, and travel to the game together. You know, we had a discussion before the week, the week of the grand final. So the Chains came and said, what do you want to do? Do you want to all jump in a bus and catch a bus? And we said, well, no, we, we actually feel comfortable doing what we've been doing for the last four weeks. And that's getting in their own cars with their own families and finding our own way to the, to the ground, which we yeah. did. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of. more relaxed. Yeah, um, it is unheard of. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, things like that. We, we just made sure they were comfortable and we, we just enjoyed what what we did previously we didn't change we didn't want to change too much just because it was the grand final and that was i think that was uh credit to the coaching staff you know sheenzy royce um, at the time saying you know look we're just gonna we're just gonna keep doing what we're doing and make sure you guys are, are comfortable yeah nah for sure um touching on your grassroots as in when you're a kid growing up and all that stuff i did some research and um your family unfortunately had a house fire when you were younger and yeah, unfortunately, lost your mother as a teen, and the McGuinnesses took you in, sort of thing. As in Kevin and Ken and their mum, sort of like a, a second family, sort of thing. What was that like having Kevin and Ken, who are notorious Western Suburbs players themselves, um, you know, and having that sort of influence impacting on you as a teenager? Oh, it was huge. I wouldn't have. Uh, I don't think I would have played league if I'd never met uh, the McGuinness family. Um, like you said, I, t- I, mean, I moved, I was, I was living in Lighton Ridge, born in Lighton Ridge at the time, and I was pretty young when our house got burned down. And we relocated to, to Ashfield, funny enough, um, mm-hmm. ironically enough, right near the, the Leeds Club. And, um, you know, we ended up in, in Campbelltown in the early 80s, late 80s. And that's when I was playing, I was a soccer player. I was playing, for, I was playing soccer at the time. Typical oh, wow. Greek, Greek family that, you know, they put me in soccer. And, and then I met the McGuinness boys, like you said, and that was, I guess, the start of my rugby league journey. And, um, yeah, they, they took, I, I don't know, it was just an instant friendship, I guess. We, we, we connected in, me and Kevin, the younger of the McGuinness boys in year five. And um, it was just, I guess, uh, I guess it was fate. On you know, from there, just, yeah. Yeah, on from there, they took me in. And, the, and yeah, my mum passed pretty early and um, I spent a lot of time at their house. I, you know, for whatever reason, it was, I guess, just to get away from my own house or on, whatever yeah. it was. But, um, yeah, Kevin's mum, she... She was more than willing to take another another child in, and, and even though she had another, I think she adopted you know the Kevin's cousins as well. So there was probably about five or six of us in the house at, at one stage, plus oh, wow. other kids. And yeah, so she um, yeah, she didn't blink an eye to take me in, and you know I'm, I'm forever grateful for that. So, but um, in saying that, yeah, I, I'm pretty close with the boys as well at the moment. We we got to experience junior football together with the Minto Cobras. Yep. Um, school football with Sarah Redfern High School. Then we sort of debuted around that same time, 95, mm. 96, um, and played a lot of uh, footy together. So, um, yeah, we, again, that was, I guess, the start of my journey, just even meeting those guys. They were massive in rugby league. You know, they were always playing rugby league as, as kids, you know, from under... They started at the age of six, whereas I started when I was 10, 11. So, yeah, um, yeah no, that was that was definitely the start of my journey and, and forever, forever grateful for it. 
that's honestly amazing um, to hear that, you know, it, the, the old adage, it really does take a village and the village come through. And Yeah, that's right. <laughs> excuse me for that. Um, after your tenure with the Tigers, you then went over to Huddersfield before coming back to the Tigers. But what was it like, the culture change, the code differences and all that over in the Super League for Huddersfield? Uh, yeah, mate, look, to be honest, it was a fantastic experience and I'm glad I did it. Um, it, it I was a bit hesitant at the time. Um, my, my wife had, you know, probably never, and myself, never lived out of, you know, the MacArthur area. So to, to pack up and live in another country. In another was, country. Was like... we, had, we had, we had uh, two young kids at the time and, you know, three and one and to, um, oh, wow. to, to step into another country and, and, and make a new life for two years was, was to be a pretty daunting. But once we got there. Uh, you know, it was a bit, few, bit of a challenge for the first few months, you know, living in the cold. And, you know, you're talking minus four. I think at one stage I had to play in at Bradford and, um, you know, my wife being, I'm going away on camps and my wife having to having to, having to uh, live, you know, by herself for two weeks, you know, in a foreign place. So the first few months was pretty challenging. But um, after that, once we found our, our feet, we, you know, we settled in pretty well. We, we made some amazing friends and, when it was time to leave, we actually didn't want to leave. So oh, wow. it, was, it, was, it was quite a, it was quite a journey for us. Uh, the football-wise, mate, the football, when I was there, it was fantastic. Uh, the all-round competition is probably not as strong as the NRL. That's probably the only difference. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, here you've got 16 teams that are, are pretty tough. On level, on even, par with everyone. Yeah, yeah, even if they're coming first or they're coming last, they're, it's still a tough, tough game. You know, there's a still competition. Whereas over there... They probably, yeah, if you, they probably had six, seven really strong teams and then they had probably another four or five weaker teams where you knew yeah. you, you could either rest players or, or whatever. So, yeah. Um, so, more yeah, or less, it's was, like playing trial games for the NRL over in Super League yeah. when it comes to playing against a lesser sort of strength, uh, strength team, sort of thing. Yeah, correct. Yeah, good way to put it. Yeah, but look, the footy was great. I enjoyed it. I, I really loved my time there and I probably would have stayed. Uh, longer if I, I didn't get an opportunity to come and work back at the club. So, mm. um, you know, I, I I always talk to the some of the players and say if you've if you've achieved and you've done everything here and possible in, in Australia, go, um, over go, go over there, give it a go because it's um yeah it's a wonderful experience. Well, I mean that's what Jimmy Maloney's reasoning was like. He'd won a New South Wales um, series. He'd won two grand finals. He's played for Australia. It was like, what else is there for me to do? Exactly. Yeah. You know, go over there. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree that you just, you know, and you get to travel the world and you get to travel so many places because it's so close. And yep. Um, you know, you would have like gone to Greece. I'm realize. guessing while you're over there for a bit as well. Uh, I, I didn't. I went because I went uh, to Greece a previous a few. Yeah, I went to Greece a few years before that um, uh, to sort out a passport. But we got to go to like yeah, your France and your Venice and all mate, places that I thought I'd never ever get to. So yeah. Um, yeah, the experience, that part of it was, uh, was unbelievable. No, that's fair enough. Um, now, I've got a question from one of our sponsors, which is SkySpark Electrical. He asks, if you could meet your teenage self now, what advice would you give him to steer him through life and through your future NRL career? Wow. Where do I start on that one? Um, oh, no, no, hey, it's a good one. Look, I wouldn't change too much in terms of to get my, to myself through my NRL career, only because... I um, I think I I did everything that I possibly could well, and I, I trained hard, and I um, I had you know I was a fighter in terms of um wanting to get my spot. Probably the only advice um, as a teenager. Um, that's a tough question, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, I, look, I I don't think I did too much wrong, and I think I, I yeah I'm pretty happy with the way I I went through my. Career, I didn't. I gave everything that I had when I got the opportunity, and that's probably the reason I, you know, I was lucky enough to play so many games and and last so long in in my career. So I was always a, I was never the most skillful player, and I was always um always you had to work made hard. Sure you, made sure you're the most yeah. hardworking. Every player that yeah. I've interviewed, I think that player. yeah, I think that helps a lot. You know, skill skill can get you so far, but if you don't have that work ethic, um, you'll get stuck and you'll get you'll get taken over by someone who doesn't yep. have that work ethic to work harder. So, yeah, to be honest, I wouldn't change too much. I would just, um, yeah, probably just, you know, the only thing, the only, I would stay in school because I left early. So that was probably the only thing. No, yeah. that's fair enough. Yeah. Um, as I said, a lot of players I've interviewed, they've said more or less the advice would be uh, work hard because hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work. You know? Yeah, that's perfect. So, yeah, and, and it's shown that you know I was lucky enough to coach a few, be part of um, assistant coaching with Hodge for a couple of teams last year and a couple of years before that, and 
you see that all the time. You know, you see the guys that are willing to do the hard work and and build that work ethic, and they're the ones that come through um, and and have a good careers. Yeah, exactly. Um, we've got another question from my mate. He's a Tigers tragic, and shout out to his organisation, UND Youth Services. He asks, "What was it like to play alongside Benji, and also alongside Benji in the 05 Grand Final?" Oh, it was fantastic. You, you know, he's such a. Um, I think, and I always say, when so when Benji came through uh, as a, as a teen, a young kid, he brought so much so much enthusiasm that. You know, he helped uh, us older guys to get through that. So, um, very you know, erratic, I guess. He, it took <laughs> him a while to get out of that. And you know, steps you, and all yeah, that. and you know what? But we adapted to it. We he did it. What you saw on the field is what he did at training. You know, there's yeah. no he didn't just you know he just didn't not he just didn't rock up on a weekend and start throwing the ball out of his <laughs> his ass. He he practiced it at training. You know, he he would do that at training. Um, so, and that's what made him such a great player. Um, that's why you know, that flick um, pass worked in the grand final because you, exactly. you guys would train with it, you know. You train well, you look at Paddy Richards, no way, no other player I think would have got that or expected that apart from Paddy Richards because he did that so much, so many times at training. Um, and he was so, you know, unpredictable, and that what made, that's what made him such a great player. You couldn't defend him, you know, teams nah. would try to defend him and say, you know, he's going to do this, this, and this, but to be honest, he probably didn't even know he was going to do it himself at that time, yeah. so. Um, no, it's fantastic, and I thought, and again, one of those things you look back at, and you, you know, I, I got to play with, you know, one of the greatest players to play the game, um, and he changed the way young kids played the game, and that's, you know, that's, definitely that's a future immortal, in my opinion. Like, yeah. whether or not that's after he passes in 40, 50 years time, but I reckon he's definitely an immortal. Um, well, I agree because, like I said, he changed the way kids play. You know, they all want to do the step, they all want to do the flick pass. They all, all wanted the X blades, Benji boots, everything. Exactly. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, you know, those players come once in a lifetime, and you know he's definitely one of those. Agreed. Um, switching to some fun sort of topics, how do you like your steak? Medium rare. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, it's got, a, got a bit of blood in it. <laughs> yep. Yep. Doesn't need to be Merlin though. I don't like that. Um, nah, if you could have mind. a superpower, what would it be and why? This is a tough one because I've been watching uh, all. The, I've been catching up on all the Marvel movies with my daughter. She's been yep. uh, wanting to watch. We've been watching it from the the year, whatever you're supposed to, in the yeah, order you're supposed one, to watch yeah, it. Yep. Yep. And I'm enjoying all their. I'm enjoying all their superpowers. So at the moment, I'm probably. Um, I don't mind the Ant Man actually because you can yeah. get into any places you want. So even though know, he's strong, he's mobile, he doesn't, you know, you, you can sneak into anything. So maybe the Ant Man at the moment. So yeah. something like that. So some of those sort of powers. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, honestly, that's awesome. Um, what is your current beer of choice? Uh, Great Northern. Mm. Great Northern. Yeah, Great Northern. Drop. Great Northern yeah. is a really good drop. Um, since the COVID restart. How do you think the NRL is going with the new changes such as six again, captain's challenge, and how do you think the Tigers are handling that as well? Uh, I'll start with the six again. I'm loving it. I oh, think so it's, the, it's making the game flow, and I think you, you'll find a lot of people are. Um, it's, it, there's no stop-start part. Mm. A little bit, you know, you know, you're not sure when it, if it should be or not, not be, but you know what, the... the the good thing about it, you don't have time to even think about it and question it's, it. You exactly. Just, it's, it's six again. Okay, let's, it's, let's enjoy the next set of six. So uh, at the moment, I'm, I'm actually enjoying it. I'm really loving that side of it. Um, how the Tigers are handling it? Bits and pieces. They're going okay some days, some teams, and they're, they're, they're not handling it so well in other games. So they're a little bit more inconsistent with it. Um, but um, I think once we get it, we, we, we do well with that opportunity. So... Um, but yeah, I look. I enjoyed it. I can't remember the other question you asked me. Was there a third one there? Um, not really. I, it was nah, literally right. um, how they're going, yeah. sort of thing. Speaking yeah. of oh, how the they Tigers go. went, how In- do you think they went last night? <laughs> inconsistent, very inconsistent at the moment. They're not. They're not putting teams away when they should. Um, we're not taking advantage of leads when we, we, you know, when we've got them. You think of the, Pen- the Parramatta game a week ago. We mm. were up twelve nil, I think, at the time, and we allowed. And come back and you know sixteen twelve at half time again More last night we yeah yeah we again eight nil I know we missed a couple of conversions eight nil but we should have you know the way we were playing um, at that first twenty minute mark we should have uh, put them away mm. you know worries uh, you went up against your, you know, your former teammate Toddy Payton <laughs> yeah well that's only if there's anything I could be happy about that's probably anything I was happy about that he you know he was coaching the team so but other than that no I was pretty de- devastated that they'd lost and let uh, a lead like that. Uh, slip mm. away. 
No, that's fair enough. I mean, if it's any consolation, the Tigers decimated my team, which is the Broncos. So, <laughs> but but every yeah. team decimates the Broncos at the moment. <laughs> at the moment, but they're going okay. They're they're handling, hanging in there throughout these tough times, I guess. So. Well, I mean, every team's got to go through a, 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 a shit time, and unfortunately, it's the Broncos' time to go through a shit time. Um, About time. Yeah, and it took them for thirty years or something. So <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And speaking of, how have you managed switching from playing to retirement? Yeah, I was okay. I was um, I actually did it. In, I did it in bits and pieces. I, I retired from England in two thousand and nine, and then um, I came back, and you know it wasn't it wasn't planned. But I ended up uh, playing um, first grade for towards the back end. I think from about round ten, we had a few injuries, and Sheenzy asked me to fill in for a few few weeks. And I'd done a, I'd done a little bit of training in the off season, so I was I wasn't too unfit. I ended up playing for the rest of the year, and I said, "No, I'm done." I was thirty three, retired, and and then he called me again around 14, I think it was 2010, after, you know, he had, again, just a few injuries I had in the front row. So I, I played a few more weeks there, got injured, and I said, no, I'm definitely done this time. And yep. I retired, and I got into the, the strength and conditioning side of things and a little bit of uh, – so I was around the team sort of environment. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I was uh, moved on in 2014 um, from the footy sort of area because of a, a coaching change and – I got into the corporate stuff, which um, I'd always done as a player anyway. I think most players do it without even knowing yeah. that they, they're corporate, they're ambassadors or whatever they, they are. And I, um, yeah, I, I've, I've enjoyed that since 2014. I've been doing corporate sponsorships and I get to meet a lot of companies that, you know, want to join join the club for either passion or business or whatever it is they want to do it for. And um, I, I, I enjoy that side of it. It's, it's a challenge, definitely this environment. Um, Especially you know, with COVID, so many, yeah. Yeah, so could not into that. You know, you obviously you're competing with nine other teams around Sydney, and you know you're trying you're vying for the same dollar, and you also got to you know you're trying to offer something um, different. That more but, or less, every other team is, but you have got to figure out a different. Exactly. Yeah. Well, look, and what makes my job easier is West Tigers are such a strong brand and a, mm. such a recognisable brand that people want to jump on board anyway. So that makes my job a little bit easier. But again, just this time, this this time where. You know, it is a little bit of a challenge, but um, you know, we're a strong club and we're financially, you know, one of the better clubs at the moment. So it's been fantastic. You know, that's fair. Um, and I've got one more question. It's a, more of a topic sort of thing, I guess. What advice would you give, or could you give, to any youngsters, whether that's teenagers or kids, that are hoping to make it in the big, you know, um, first first grade one day? Uh, ask questions. Um, don't be scared to ever ask a question about either skills or you know the just how to how to handle training or whatever it is. Um, you know, rely on your coaches. That's what they're there for. Um, never get scared to go up to a coach or a trainer or even a former player if you see him floating around. If you're in an in NRL club and and get him to you know help help you with something. Um, train hard. You can't. There's no. There's no secret to it, you know. If you want to be successful and, and you want to be able to handle the, the rigid week in week out of rugby league and a real level, you need to be able to train hard and do that week in week out because you um, you'll get found out if you don't. Yeah. You know, you can't be you can't be in there giving you know half hearted sessions thinking you're going to get a you know you're going to get a start and then stay there because it just doesn't it just doesn't cut it anymore. Um, so yeah, no, train hard, ask questions. Love what you do. You got to enjoy it. Mm. You know, you got to enjoy getting up every morning and going to get flogged um, <laughs> as much as it hurts. You know, you just got to enjoy, it and you got to enjoy getting hit. You got to enjoy wanting to you want to get out on the field and, and bash people. And you know, you want to, especially in my position, you're a, you're a front row. You're going to want to, you know, you you, you got to be able to enjoy, be able to get tackled hard, and that's what you want to do. So, um, but you got to enjoy it. That's the main thing. You got to be able to go there with a smile on your face and walk out of there with a smile on your face. Yep. No matter how hard you're hurting. Exactly. Yeah. Honestly, that's basically it. Um, 